You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's After Show. Hello, AfterBuzzers, and welcome to The Killing After Show. We are going to be doing episode two, very aptly named Unraveling. I am one of your lovely hosts, Oriana Leo, and I've got Phil Svitek here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a very special guest on the line today. His name is Levi Meaden, and he plays AJ Fielding, that uh, very helpful cadet to Kyle, who's going through some serious issues on this episode. Uh, So welcome, Levi. Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks a lot for having me on. Of course. Welcome to After Buzz TV. So... This now, is... mind you, I want, I want to say this. Yes. I want to cut right in. <laughs> as soon as we start the show, the intro is playing, and Oriana says to me, I bet he has ulterior motives. Uh, for, uh, Only on this show <laughs> could you say that. And to, for me... Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, I honestly think you're one of the only good guys. Now, again, watch me be wrong by episode three. But um, are there ulterior motives? I mean, it's the killing. I don't think anybody in the killing ever has, you know, a very straightforward forward motive up and I think they always have ulterior motives. Um, so that's a yes? So, <laughs> I mean, what a fashion, I'm no different than anybody else. I mean, it seems like at the very least, uh, if if you do have an ulterior motive, for me, I think it's very simple that you hate this other person. And so if if you have the means to, to use him as a way of um, just getting and beating the crap out <laughs> of the other kid as he did tonight, then it's all worth it. Do we know the name? What is the name of the character of the really bad kid? Uh, Lincoln. 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 Thank you. Okay. Cause he, Lincoln Knopf. Yeah. Oh boy, is he a bad seed. He yeah, is. I know. It was, it was great to watch that scene actually play out and give him the light cross before he. Yeah, so in that. Really so we might thinking. as well just talk about the scene that we're already thinking about before we, you know, before we jump into the whole show. Is that, <laughs> you know, the the master, I don't even remember her name either. The colonel. The colonel who runs our school here has made it ex- exceedingly clear that no one is to pick on Kyle. Um, and of course that doesn't happen. And so Lincoln, who is just the ultimate bad boy, kind of gets his ass handed to him at your hands, at AJ's hands. Um, yeah. What, when you're approaching the scene, like, do you feel like he's had enough and he wants to see Kyle get some revenge? Cause I didn't even know Kyle had it in him. Um, yeah. Like when I was approaching the scene, I had the idea that I knew how I had it in. I'm kind of seen glimpses of it before. Mm. Um, and so it was, but it's more kind of something that I think, as far as I could tell, AJ thought everybody had in them and they wouldn't be at the school if they didn't. Right. So it was a matter of getting that brought out and trying to like enrage him and push him far enough to, you know, react to the person that's been as awful as Lincoln has been. Yeah, because he really just eats it up until now. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. in terms of the academy, um, you know, were you f- kind of familiar with um, a military substructure? Like, um, you know, did you have to do a lot of research getting into the role just in general, or were you already somewhat familiar? Um, I wasn't really familiar. I mean, I have a couple friends who had done cadets in one form or another, so, you know, kind of knew about it from the outside, but it was quite a bit different than um, this, the structure of the academy here at St. George's. So uh, I did a lot of research. Um, not so much into the life of cadets, but more the mentality of being in the military and how the military builds up kind of a brotherhood um, feeling in order to get people to fall into line. And I thought that was really what the core belief of the of AJ was at the academy, was this kind of place of belonging, this place of family that he didn't have anywhere else. So that was kind of the way I got into that. Um, and the structure of it was just, we had a great... A military advisor on set who gave us the rundown of the structure, and Vina had done some of his research, so that was all kind of in place beforehand. Yeah, because it really shows, even with the colonel, as she says to Lyndon, you know, outside whatever rules you have, they may work, but uh, in our eyes, you're pretty much a civilian, and so 
all of that is is great to really see. Um, for me, I'm curious, um, and I'm trying to figure out how to best word it, but um, there's such a sense of realism, right? And and to me, when when the colonel walked in on you guys in the bathroom, mm -hmm. you know, just getting ready, that in itself, like, had that been the only scene, um, it was not necessarily shocking to watch, but it was it was startling to, for lack of a better term. But then when you guys are um, the more important one to me that I want to ask you about is the shower scene. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on in that scene, and um, everyone uh, is physically and emotionally exposed in this entire scene. H how did you guys approach that? Because, you know, I don't, I've never seen anything like that in terms of uh, television, certainly. I mean, they're making fun of him, calling him Carrie, because he's, he's bleeding out, and I thought that was a great reference. And then you're standing up for him, but yet you're both kind of, you're exposed, you're, you're vulnerable. Naked. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that did a surprising amount of the work, right? Because once you got it, we were pretty much naked with a little piece covering up our, our frontal parts. But once we were just out there and that was the case, we kind of got used to the room and the feeling of that. And we'd already practiced it a bit, so we kind of knew where we were going to go. And then when we started to roll, we just dropped everything and decided to let it run. Um, I mean, I think that scene in particular, too, was really kind of, bolstered up by um by Tyler he really kind of brings it for that one because it's such a it's the reaction he has to Sterling and the blood coming down and him trying to reassimilate back into this world um but you know and then once he kind of has that moment it's just a matter of meeting him and once you're that exposed you don't really have an option to turn around and go back right so you guys are like really fully committed yeah so I um I, I'm wondering. I mean, I wish we had I wish we had access to a military academy because it this scene in the shower it makes me so uncomfortable, but also really sad because this kid is a loner. Um, he's been a loner, Kyle, and he hasn't had he's been a loner within his own family as far as we can tell. But it just seems like the level of just meanness and bullying and violence within this school is not a safe place for him. Like, why would his family send him there? Right? Like, it's not. Well. It, yeah, I mean, it, well, I mean, he's such a fish out of water in that school because that school is privileged kids, but it's nothing but kids whose parents were able to keep them out of jail and instead sent them to the school. And Tyler's parents just happened to dislike him enough, it seems, to <laughs> want to ship him away and get him somewhere to toughen him up. And they just threw him into this very, very violent situation. I mean, um, it really wasn't until later in the season that it dawned on all of us how how they are still kids. Right. Because up until that point, especially in this episode, like the violence that's underlying them uh, is just so, so prevalent, right? Well, yeah, and it's for your character to be like holding down Link and the bully, you know, to get a pretty severe beating. Like, I, you know, it wasn't yeah. just like hit him a couple times. It was like again and again. Um, and to think about if there hadn't have been, I don't know, cooler head, you know, if somebody hadn't said the right thing to make him stop, which I think your character does, uh, to say that's enough. Well, I finally, yeah, I mean, I wrestled him off. I always thought in that scene, I never thought he'd go that far. Right. I thought he'd be in control somewhat, right? And he isn't. He completely flies off the handle. And we see, we see that rage that's actually just below the surface for him. Which makes a lot and of sense. Which what sort of I just I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I love the way that that character oh, yeah. was developed in in that scene. Essentially, like we get to finally see something from Kyle, right? Even though it had to yeah. be at AJ's hands, essentially, to get it to come yeah. out. Yeah. Well, he's a guy that kind of needs to be pushed, right, before he's gonna let the darker side of himself come out. Mm. Foreshadowing. <laughs> um. What was it like to work with Holder and Lyndon um, in those scenes? And I, specifically Holder, because he has such funny lines that I wonder, do you guys crack up when he's saying some of this stuff? Um, we don't usually crack up because we know they're coming, but one thing he does do is he, he won't improvise lines because it's usually pretty, um, it, it's pretty specific lines for the scene to work, right? And we know they're coming, but uh, there would be a few times where he'd do an action, like he'd zip up my hoodie in the first one when he wasn't supposed to, and I was stand, trying there, like standing there trying to remain serious and 
got to kind of turn away from the camera because we're not expecting him to do anything. He's a very, very charismatic man, and when he comes in and does something, yeah, it's hard not to laugh. Well, especially being in that character, you know, of being this military guy oh, yeah. where you cannot break for a moment. No, and not at all. So you're just sitting there like, luckily because I got to be so tense, I can kind of divert it all to my, my posture and everything else. But there's a few times where I think I ruined a couple takes. <laughs> Fantastic posture, by the way. I noticed in this oh, episode. Good. I really did. Like, you have a sort of authority uh, um, in your physical presence comparative to the other kids, which I think really comes through. Oh, great. Thank you. I worked quite hard on that, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Bravo. And, and you had, uh, for me, I think this was episode one, but you had that great line where he tells you, you know, you don't have to be so serious, and you're like, or he says, cut the sir, yes, sir, and you're like, yes, sir, sir. <laughs> So sure, that, yes, sir. Yeah, I found that humorous. So should we run down yeah, uh, that through our episode? Let's do it. Let's let's get into tonight's right. episode. Not tonight's. Tonight. <laughs> well, number two, uh, that's called Unraveling Levi. We'd love for you to join us as we kind of break down this episode and get your thoughts. Sure. Um, but All we right. we open on in the ballistics range, and we literally see Lyndon unraveling. We yeah. Do. You know, and I, I mean, love that opening scene. I remember reading that and then watching it. I just thought it was so cool. I've never seen anybody actually do that. She, you know, we see her, she can, she's flinching at every gun fire, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah. that was pretty intense because, you know, you, we see that scene afterwards of Holder, you know, telling her essentially to get it together, right? And yeah. um, I, I, it was funny that it's called Unraveling just because my first thought was like, oh no, it's happening already. Yeah, like well, we're she's two gonna seconds into the episode, and it's art. She's already falling <laughs> apart. Yeah, you don't you don't really get a moment to waste with six episodes, right? So it, exactly. Um, but I will applaud it um, only because just even in this episode alone. So we start there, but where we pretty much end with her saying, "You know what? I was having an affair with Skinner, and if there's anything more you want, you ask him. I ruined a marriage." Yep. Um, that. <laughs> She went bold and she did it. She did, but she really didn't have a choice yeah. because she's ca she's not capable of holding it together. Well, if if that was the case, she would have said like she would have let the truth go. Yeah, you think so? I think so. I mean, she, to me, she is she is being truthful as much as she possibly can because that is gonna at least make her seem vulnerable. It's that strategic vulnerability. Like she's gonna seem vulnerable even though she's not nearly as vulnerable as she could be. Does that make sense? She's a complicated yeah. person. She so. really is. <laughs> so we see. I mean, I think she just she grasps onto a little bit of truth to get through to a bigger lie. I think she knows that most cases, or most criminals are caught up in their own lies more than anything. So she's trying to minimize that as much as possible. Absolutely. Um, but obviously, a big part of this episode is Kyle going back. Right? He's going back. He's integrating back mm -hmm. into school. Um, and, you know, the character of Lincoln, I find really disturbing. I don't understand what this kid's deal is, like why he wants to hurt Kyle so much. But when he says, like, oh, amnesia, amnesia's a bitch. Like, where? You, did you grow up around a lot of guys? I, I feel like if you went to a regular I, okay, public I don't school. Yeah, I went there's... to a private school until eighth grade. I went to public school in high school, but I am also an only child. I saw a lot of meanness. I had meanness. Yeah. But this kid has, like, a mean bone. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, he's he's like a bit of a psycho, but it doesn't help to be surrounded by a bunch of other psychos that are pumping you up or you know, to, you know stand your own ground. And he's and just a bit of a nut. And case. to me, he's being you know satirical about the whole thing. We we know from last episode when he's talking to Holder, you know, he doesn't buy into this any of this notion. And whereas your character obviously uh, is the counter opposite to that. Um, you know, it, it's just a rebellion to this whole thing. And I, I you know, call it maybe he hasn't found himself. May, maybe ultimately he will be a good person. Um, yeah, I don't he think just, so. He just had to discover that. <laughs> he's destroyed. Or he's, he's going to be the next uh, person we're at, person of interest, eventually. We see Kyle going through this experience, right, where he goes back to school. He seems very damaged and quiet, but he stands up to the colonel. And it's like, I don't want to be treated any differently. You know, like, I don't want to go to the infirmary. And that was the reason I was thinking maybe AJ had an ulterior motive, just because with the beating and the bruised hand, 
I'm not clear if he ends up getting sent to the infirmary, but the colonel does say, like, you made your choice. You made your choice. You made an example of yourself. And I was kind of reaching in this episode as far as Kyle is concerned, like, what are his motivations? We find out near the end that he knows a lot more than he's letting on. He he does. I mean, it's one of those questions, how much does he actually know? Um, because with, with the girl in particular, it's just per, perhaps he's protecting her identity. Now, it... it it goes back to the fact of, you know, uh, charges were never pressed against her. Right. Um, we also find out about the piano. We sure do. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, uh, lot of evidence, that, evidence that's being thrown at us in this episode, episode that's yeah. kind of going every which way. I just see Kyle standing up for himself and saying, like, don't treat me like a victim. I want to be a grown-up, kind of. But what he does with that freedom, like you said, Levi, you know, he kind of goes flies off the handle... I feel like we're getting to see a, we're getting to see it's very expository about Kyle. We're getting to see a lot about him, but I just have some more questions than well with with answers. her with her. I want to I want to table this to you guys and may, maybe um, uh, Levi, you can't answer it specifically because you'll probably you obviously know the answer. But um, <laughs> having seen all the episodes, but she says that one line of they got what they deserved. Mm. And, you know, we didn't really linger on that shot. We didn't really get a reaction this from is him. Cat Nelson. Yes. Yes. We didn't really see his reaction, at least I don't think too much. And we just cut away from that. And I, I found that to be so telling. And for the first time, I'm so angry that she, 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 she used the pronoun. I've never been more angry at a pronoun. Because <laughs> who is she referring to? I think she's referring to the family. Yeah. But then that's the setup that's going to make me go the wrong way. Right. And also, you know, he asks, she asks him, how much do you remember? And he says that he doesn't remember anything from the night. So that's okay. You're okay. Yeah. They got what they deserved. I mean, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah I mean, I think she just thinks uh, he's completely innocent. Right. Um, and he knows, she knows how hard it's been for him and that family and how he had to find some way to get out. And, as bad as it is, she's trying to explain that this was the way out. This was uh, somebody else, you know, attacked oh. you and your family again. But she's trying to find a good, a good place for it, I guess. Are you speaking about cat? Vile youth. <laughs> yeah, cat. Okay, okay, good. No, that's really interesting. Um, so in that case, I w you know, if he, because he always keeps. Uh, I mean, one of the ways that we got to the bathroom scene was because of you know the worry for his younger sister. Um, you know, and so he seems very protective of her, but the older sister, as mm -hmm. we find out, um, he holds nothing back in terms of his resentment for her. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, I, so I found that interesting, and I, I, I'm curious to see where that's going to go, especially with the photos, and the, there's got to be more to the story. I'm really excited to, to see that. There's got to be more to the story, and we find out from the maid when we hear that there is a beach house, you know, the neighbor gives us some information saying the lights were on at the beach house and he clearly knows this family very well from watching um, and creating his art. But the maid says um, that she, doesn't have, she didn't have anything to do because nothing was ever out of place. And I feel like that has got to be the most telling evidence we have in this episode. Is so that when something is out of place? Something is out of place because she said, it's how do you have three kids and there's never a mess. It's like you would expect to have a mess, and there is just nothing wrong, nothing out of place. To me, that smells like cover-up. Something. Like, if the maid can't even see your dirty laundry, how dirty is it? Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> so I feel like we know where, where, where it's going. How, wh uh, where does the maid fall into the list of suspects? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but speaking you never of, know with maids. You never know. But speaking of, um, I kind of wanted to touch on, you know, we have Lyndon and Holder in this episode. You know, we've talked about Kyle, but we have Lyndon's unraveling, and we have Holder having his moment with baby shoes. Like, we get to see this, oh, yeah. we get to see these different sides of the characters where... Is that an unraveling or a coming of age? Well, I think for Lyndon, remember I said at the last episode that she looks at herself, she can't even look at herself in the mirror. And that came true today. It came true today where she sees some kind of speck of dirt, right, on the fixture on the bathroom and she has to scrub it. And when she catches a glimpse of herself, she punches the mirror and the vi the vision is thus distorted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, to me, that was so poetic of just like she's she yeah. is the monster that she killed. She, yeah. She's no different than him. And she can't even look at herself without seeing something so ugly and warped and disturbing 
and what on earth is that going to do to her psyche? I don't see how she can keep it up. We'll find out. I mean, she, she's, uh, the, there's, in terms of unraveling, I mean, her, her story's unraveling quickly, mm -hmm. you know, where, where she told well, out live how she was qu questioning people, and, and that came out to be false. Uh, the last phone call was to her. Um, the daughter is still, she's going to be the biggest one. The daughter is the key because yeah. she's wearing the ring. I can't remember what's the detective's yeah. name that's going after the kid who's looking into it. I can never, I can never remember his name because uh, to me Holder just cracks me up every time. And I know. and and for the first time, and, and what I love, you know, obviously it's that tiny bit of evidence, but it's also that tiny bit of action that Holder does, where instead of taking the evidence, because that would have done it. He takes the coffee and the donut because he has to be the comedian. Right. He has to be, you know, uh, that sense of whatever busting balls in the in the police. Yeah. And I mean, and you guys are just saying about how um, Lyndon's unraveling. I think one of the big things with Holder having those baby shoes is the only way she's going to stay together is if she can lean on Holder. But if she has a kid on the way, you know. Totally, his priorities are going to change. Trouble. Exactly. And he, we're seeing this whole other side of him. I mean, he's transfixed by baby shoes in the grocery store, which we find out he buys. Mm -hmm. And we're, mm -hmm. we're just seeing this whole other side to him. But I also see the vulnerability that it makes me wonder, like, can he hack it? Can he hack it? Like, he seems so, so, I don't want to say devastated, but this, there's this real heavy weight on him, I feel like, knowing that he's going to yeah, be a father. I mean, major decisions to be made coming up, right? I mean, and he has a history, history, especially as a being a junkie, you know, he has a history of, of splitting, mm -hmm. of yeah. leaving. It just makes yeah. me wonder, like, can he handle this? He's got the secret he has to help cover up because Lyndon can't do it by herself. He has a new baby coming, which, by the way, his girlfriend, or now fiance, I guess, she does make that comment in the grocery store, like, it's early in the pregnancy. Oh, is that the tell of like, hey, let's I don't get rid know. of it? No, I think that she just means, you know, there's that safe zone, you mm -hmm. know, before a few months you could still have a miscarriage. But I'm wondering if that's foreshadowing because he's getting really attached to the idea of this baby. I, to me, I'm curious because with everything that he's seen in the world, I mean, apart from having his girlfriend, like, and even then, like, we've never really seen like a romantic date from them. No. Um, and so with all that he's seen, I question why would you want to raise a kid around this knowing that every family does have secrets and uh, the secrets that you've seen are the worst of the worst. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. Do you really want to raise a kid in this environment? Is a child worthy of this world? He seems like he does. But like I said, I, I'm concerned. I'm really concerned for him because, like you said, Lin he's all that Lyndon has. Yeah. And Lyndon but it, it goes to your altruistic theory of where he's protecting Lyndon. Now it's splintering because he wants to perhaps be that good father and and not raise his whether daughter or son improperly. Um, Holder yeah. says something I love too, Lyndon, because she wants to keep working on the case, and he says something like, "You can't go at eleven all the time." And that's such a great yeah. way to describe her is that she is like on a, on a scale of one to 10, she's an 11 <laughs> uh, in her intensity and in her, you know, drive, work ethic, everything. But also her unraveling is a freaking 11, I feel like. Like everything about her is so intense. I wouldn't agree. Yeah. And Holder has a great way of illuminating that in his like funny way. But it's like, how can this change of lifestyle for him sustain that? You know, like being a parent is going to be an 11. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, something's definitely going to have to give. Um, do want to talk... There's a couple of things I definitely want to touch upon. I, yeah. I guess let's start with the first one because uh, it's encouraging for fans to know that we do read your comments. And there was that great comment. And I saw, uh, Oriana, you commented about yes. uh, the colonel mm -hmm. perhaps being the real mother. Of Kyle. Of Kyle. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to kind of further explain that, why one of our fans thought this? Um, well, so one of our fans, shout out, I actually don't remember her name, but um, had commented that it it seemed like the way she was looking, one was the way she was looking at Kyle, mm -hmm. right? And so like, also her interest level on the will and how much money he was getting and when. Um, I was looking at Kyle and I was seeing that he had what I thought were like marks on his back and looking at his demeanor. And she was, our fan was explaining that she was looking at the colonel while all of this was happening. And we had two kind of 
splintering perspectives on it. Mm -hmm. um, did that properly explain it? I mean, it seems like she, she, she may have a motivation mainly because of her. She seems like she knows the father, right? Mr. Stansbury, they've known each other for a long time. And she's kind of shocked. My perspective was that she was shocked to find out that this child would have no money, income, or anything until he was like 30 years old. Mm -hmm. She seemed to be really disturbed by that. But the, our fan put it together that perhaps that's because she has a stake in it. She has a stake in it. It'll be interesting to find out. It's some, there's something going on with her that I we... I mean, certainly Lyndon hates her. Yeah. So now whether or not that's a good perspective to have, um, Lyndon's not very personable at all. No. And <laughs> so. neither is the Colonel, frankly. More so than Lyndon. Yeah, she's a little warmer, but by like one degree. <laughs> uh, fair enough. What do you think, Levi, about that hypothesis that she's got? I mean, obviously you know, but coming from season two, I'm sorry, episode two, what do you think? Is that an astute observation? I mean, I think, it, I think that, that um, and the scene where she comes back and he's sobbing in the bed and she just looks at him mm -hmm. from beyond the door, mm -hmm. um, I think this is a woman who's generally has to be very, very cold and very emotionally shut off. She's risen, risen through the ranks in the military as a woman. Um, so she's got to be almost more put together and more in control of her emotions. And I think for her to crack at the sight of one of the cadets would take a lot um, if she wasn't connected to them in some way. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean... We don't know what this history is with the Stansbury. You know what? I meant to look up the meaning of the symbol. The symbol. Yeah. Fans, I'm sorry. We didn't do that. I really want it because there's a scene in this episode where Kyle is sitting there by himself and he's staring at it. Yeah. At the seal. It's uh, it's kind of tough to tell because it's slightly out of focus. Mm -hmm. But if, if you really pay attention, you kind of see the little figure. Levi, do you know what the meaning of that symbol the, is? The crest of the academy. Um, the St. George. Yeah. St. George. Um, yeah, well, it harkens back to the legend of St. George, which he had slain the dragon um, for a town and, and had become, like, a saint because of it. Um, they kind of talk about it briefly in the first episode when Lyndon leaves. That's the scene you're talking about for the, yes. the school. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's the story that um, Lyndon mentions in the first episode about it. But I think in this particular case, it, ha it holds more weight just in its connection with the school and in his understanding of it. Yeah, like, as it, we see now that Kyle's capable of, well, rage, violence, lying, um, I'm wondering what the dragon is for him. Like, did he slay the dragon already? Was that his family? Was that his father? Like, I feel like there's yeah. got to be some kind of symbolism here that goes further along with the characters. There's, yeah. I think there's, I think that scene in the bathroom, too, there's obviously a dragon that's pushing him. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Interesting. <laughs> um, what was I going to... Uh, I want to know your guys' thought on uh, the colonel eating dinner alone. Yes. It was... I don't want to say pathetic, but it almost... Where, you know, she's, she's enjoying her wine and mm -hmm. things of that nature, but it's just such a long table. And so clinical, and she's at too. The, yeah, she's at the head of it. She's at the head of the table. No one else is there. I noticed that the candelabra is not lit. There's like this beautiful, like three, you know, prong candelabra, but there's no fire. And she's very, you know, tidily cutting her meat and chewing it. Like so mm -hmm. proper and so alone. And I just want to know what's going through her mind. So this, I mean, we, I might want to save this for predictions. I'll just say, I think that this is giving me a prediction because okay. she is so alone, but we know that she has these connections to this family. I, it has they have to be going together okay um let's talk about the artist mm -hmm. um i uh, i know we've kind of uh, tippy toed around him but i want to talk specifically because he's got these photographs and um he's almost the at least for this episode he's the red herring because uh it comes back inconclusive now whether or not he's further involved that, that can still be the case but at least for right now he's not um and i i love when they throw in these types of characters um, and he's got his own family secrets, and he's an artist, and, and you know, he just keeps tripping up on his, you know, it, in terms of 
the correlation to Lyndon, he's tripping up every two seconds. Right. With a story of like, you didn't mention lights. Right. Why, where were you calm? Right. Why did you assume that was that house? And then obviously she, he has some kind of relationship with this older daughter because she's posing for him. Right? Like those photographs look like they're posed. She's not like being spied on. Like she's standing out there. Yeah. In her room. And some of them, she's nervous a little bit at the at the beginning, but yes. she gets more comfortable. Yeah. And that really, that definitely makes me wonder like, are they talking to each other? He sent her the pictures, obviously, so she knows. Is that the limit of their communication? I don't know. This guy is really interesting because he's he's a deep suffering artist. You know, he talks about how how suffering is you know part of his condition as an artist. Yeah. Um, and there was also the bag of <laughs> female accoutrements. Yes. Or the two bags. The two bags in the beach house. Yeah. And we don't know who they belong to, do we? Or we think they might belong to Cat, but they do a bra matching. <laughs> that yeah. They don't match of anyone else that's in the house. So they know, like, size and style. Holder does know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> size and style weren't matching. <laughs> Leaves us, you know, and he makes a joke, too, with Lyndon. Like, hey, why don't you try some of this racy stuff? You know, you, like, you shop at Ross Dress for Less. I don't think she's mm -hmm. changed her outfit in forever. She still wears a horrible sweater. <laughs> uh well, to be fair, he doesn't really change. He his doesn't appearance. change either. Yeah, he changed his snuggy one time because there was blood necessity. On it. Yeah, <laughs> necessity. <laughs> yes, yeah, so anything that says a lot about their characters is that they don't change. They just don't change, and partly that's what makes them good at their job. Mm -hmm. Is like to notice all the, all the little tiny differences, all the things that don't add up. But they, they themselves, I feel like, are so stagnant <laughs> in what they wear, what they do, how they see the world. Overall. Overall. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to talk about on this episode? Um, well, I'm trying to go down any like other small pieces of evidences that we were we were presented, um, only because obviously they they can either trip us up or they can uh, lead us down a certain path. Um, and this might be the start of predictions, but uh, you know when when Lincoln sees um, Kyle the cat exiting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm curious to see what he's gonna do. Oh, me too. So, shall we get into predictions? Yeah, in that let's case? get let's into predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Um, is he going to blackmail him directly, or is he going to tell someone? I don't think he's going to tell someone, because they just had the scene that uh, Levi's character, AJ, says specifically, you know, like, you don't rat. Right, we are all in this together. What happens to one happens to us all, and you know. But does Lincoln care about that? I think Lincoln cares more about his reputation. I mean, he just had his ass handed to him, mm -hmm. right? And that can't feel good coming from a bully like him. I feel like he would want to inflict the pain, like he'd want to inflict more pain on Kyle. And I, I guess you're right. It depends. Is that going to be by telling? I would imagine not. He seems more sadistic. Okay, I can get behind that. <laughs> Um, when do you think the truth of that will come out? Probably, I would say it's probably going to take an episode or two. I mean, like you said, we see Kat come in. First of all, how did she get in? And the, she's a cat. Yeah, I guess. I mean, she, she like, penetrates this fortress. Um, I have a feeling that wasn't the first time she's visited, though. Probably not. So, you know, at this, it's not like she, she was like, okay, how do I get in there? She knew, climb the drain pipe, go here, blah, 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 done. There's definitely some kind of, there's some, my, I guess what I predict is that there is some ridiculous storyline connecting everyone. You know, we know Mr. Stansberry, something happened with this girl, he didn't press charges, why, who is she related to, and how does that involve the colonel, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I have the feeling that Mr. Stansberry and his perfect family, their reputation's gonna come to light eventually, even if it's just piece by piece. Okay. Maybe he's maniacal as well. I don't know what kind of what kind of children don't leave a mess, or cut the other you know your, cut your siblings' piano wires because you don't like how they're behaving. Like it's very passive aggressive. It is, and you would you would figure he would be punished for that because I I assumed it could have been the father, mm -hmm. um, only because then you know if he's the head of the household, you can't really punish him. Right. Because you just can't because yeah. he is the household. So I think Kyle's going to start unraveling himself. I feel like we're going to see a couple of different characters unravel. Um, what do you What do you think of uh, Lyndon? The last thing that we kind of see, she's um, she's at the window of the daughter of Skinner's daughter, and uh, 
that she, look. D does she just want to get the ring back? What is her goal there? That look made me feel like she was a killer. That look made me feel like she was just, even if she was just thinking about killing her, she was thinking about it because she's the loose end. If she... Yeah, but you can't kill her because then you it's can't just kill even her, more evidence. But you can't kill anybody. I don't think she was, that's what she wanted to do, but just the look on her face made me feel like she knows that this girl is going to be the end of her and she has to do something. Mm-hmm. And is it, but because she's taken off the jewelry, is it just to steal that piece that ties everything together? I don't know, because what's our, what's our bald uh, detective's name? Oh, you keep asking me. Levi, can you, do you remember Reddick. his name? Reddick. Yeah, Reddick. Reddick, thank you. Um, he's already seen the ring, and she doesn't know that. But yeah. she knows that he's getting closer. He, obviously, he's confronted her. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like, if he presented it to a DA or someone else... If there's not that evidence right, there, right. what are you going to do with it? Okay, yeah, here's a picture of it. Here's a picture with all the kids with it, perhaps. Right. And, um, you know, oh, yeah, Skinner's daughter has it. Well, where is it? She don't have it. Right. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the goal, steal the ring. I it would certainly be less bloody. <laughs> I don't think the goal is to kill. <laughs> I don't think the goal is to either, but I just feel like that look on her face. If anything, I would uh, the better goal would be to kill Reddick. Jeez. Just saying. <laughs> Because, you know, what's the daughter really going to ultimately do? It's Reddick that's... Levi, when you saw that, the very, like, that closing scene and you see Lyndon's face, what, what were mm -hmm. your thoughts? Um, I mean, I didn't think she was going after the ring specifically. I thought, I didn't think she was going to try to kill her either. I thought she was gathering intel and trying to come up with a plan because she was at wit's end. Now, I have a question for you, and you may or may not be able to answer this. I hope you can. Have we seen the killer yet in these two episodes? Ooh, or is question. it someone that we're yet to meet? Um, I'll put it this way. It'd be bad storytelling if you hadn't met the character yet. All okay. right. I like it. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm very excited. Um, I swear to God, I'm going to be looking like everywhere. It's going to be the guy in the background. I don't know. I bet you it's someone much more obvious. Eventually, it will be yes. so obvious that, <laughs> that we're going <laughs> to uh, think we're dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always one of those. I mean, for, f you know, think about it. I mean, for, for all intents and purposes, three seasons, and it's been Skinner all along. Yeah. You know, but we didn't find that out until the very, very yeah. end. Yeah. Um, Do you have any news or gossip? Um, this isn't. You know, I don't. I don't know how pertinent this is, or uh, if anyone uh, fully cares about it. But um, Joel, who plays Holder, um, he is no longer with CAA. He's moving to a different agency. Oh. So, as reported by oh. Deadline. Um, so I we'll had so I had some little like uh, nuggets. I read that um, Joel K Kinnaman, who plays Holder, uh, was ecstatic to find out that he could drop the f bomb on Netflix. <laughs> on Netflix. Yeah. Yep. He was so excited. Yeah. That's a better fun fact like everybody than mine. Was. Um, also, the creator, Vina, is her last name Sood? Vina Sood? Yeah. That, okay, so Vina yeah. Sood confirmed that the show depicts different uh, neighborhoods in Seattle, so that season one and two was working class, season three was the streets, and then season four is the wealthy area. So mm -hmm. we're kind of like getting a different vantage point of the same city, different mm -hmm. storytelling, obviously. Um, I think that was all I had, yeah. It's a cool fun fact. Yeah, and it, and it really shows. I mean, it never ceases to amaze me the places they're willing to go, and and it's so real. It is so real. Um, well, yeah. anyway, <laughs> thank you for uh, for being on the phone with us today. Um, we really appreciate no it. No worries. And where can the fans find you if they want to follow you on Twitter? Do you have a Twitter handle? Yeah, uh, it's just Levi Meaden. Levi Meaden. Let's follow him, yeah, please. He was a fabulous guest of ours. And any upcoming projects that we can look forward to, whether uh, it down uh, the line or... I'm on one for sci-fi I can't really talk about right now, but I have another indie coming out later this year called Alice in the Attic, okay. which everybody should look out for. Alice in the Attic, we sure will. Thank you so much for joining us. Hmm. My, name lot, is, my name is Oriana Leo. You can find me on Twitter at Miss Oriana Leo or Instagram Oriana Leo. I'm also on the after show for The Nick, a fantastic show on Cinemax. So please tune into that. And definitely check us out on After Buzz TV, whether Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that social media stuff. Um, this has been episode two of season four for The Killing. We've got four more to go. Very excited. 
Um, I'm like a kid in the candy store because I really, it's 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 right there in front of me. It's right there in front of I us. But I can't allow myself to have it because every week we have to deliver the show to fans and I don't want to have it spoiled because I'll just be talking like I'm not, I'm too smart for my own good. So fans, we are suffering for you, with you, to bring you the best show ever. Thank you guys for joining us. Tune in next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.